Hi everyone, welcome. In this video, let's keep discussing the direct 3 3 invasion, and I will introduce one of the most basic Josekis. As we saw in the previous couple of videos, number 6 and 7 are the necessary follow ups to number 5. Next, white has A, B, and C, mostly these three options. In the past, we only had this honey because we thought this stone, this honey, place the maximum amount of pressure on these two black stones. And this was the most common move before the age of AI. Now, however, this is the least played, uh, at least at a higher amateur level and professional levels. And this extension and this knight's move are way more common than this honey. Why is that? This whole series on the Direct 33 Invasion is trying to answer these questions. And we'll get to part of the answer today. So this honey here, of course, has its advantages because it puts a lot of pressure on these two stones by occupying one of its liberties. However, it has a lot of downsides to it, and our understanding of this move has changed. So let's take it one step at a time. In this video, let's learn the most basic Joseki, where black plays this honey on the second line. It's black's only response to number eight. White extends. This used to be the proper Joseki for white. Black crawls one more time. White extends again. And in the past, the old Joseki, which I mentioned before in previous videos, was this, playing the honey and connect for black, and white will play the honey and the tiger's mouth at 14 and 16. So this used to be the Joseki. The idea is that black takes a corner, but white obviously has a very nice wall on the outside. And we believed, rightly, that this favors white, because white has way more potential on the outside. When the board is empty. Now, however, the Joseki is adding one more stone here on the second line in exchange for white stone on the third line. And now again, black has sent it, but this is it. This is the modern Joseki, and this favors black. So you have to ask, what is the difference? Right? Professional players, high level amateur players like me will tell you <laughs> these are the conclusions. One favors white, and the other favors black. But you have to ask, what's the difference? And that's what we're trying to answer in this video. To understand what the difference is, we can ask, what's the same, right? What is the same? The same thing between these two Josekis, right? We can even play this out on the lower right for comparison, is that black takes the corner and white takes the wall, right? But the difference is that on the lower left here, Black is completely alive, like 100%. You don't have to worry about it anymore, right? It's 100% alive. And white's wall is also much stronger. But on the upper left, that's not what it is. It's still a little bit unsettled, as we'll see in just a minute. Black takes the corner, but without this exchange, this honey and connect from either side, it's unclear whether black is 100% alive. Well, in most games, black will live very easily. You can live very easily. But white has all kinds of moves on the outside that can potentially cause trouble for black. And what's the difference in white's shape on the outside? And that's these two moves, right? This tiger's mouth, 24 and 26, which kind of moved white's wall two more spaces to the outside. But here, it stays on the fourth line. Here, it's on the sixth line, right? If you count from the bottom. And that actually makes a difference as well. So the basic idea of white blocking from the side of number six is that white wants to build on the left side when the board is empty, when the left side is empty like this. But this way, black has sent it after number 14. And black can come in very easily and split the side. And now white faces a very tough choice. You can either play an extension from the left side and black will play at number 17, most likely. And number 16 is simply too small. It's only a three space extension and you have six stones on the wall, it's simply too small. Or you can play from this side, but black will have no trouble living and building a base on the left side. And again, the value of this wall is greatly reduced. So that's black's idea for playing this Joseki. It doesn't really matter white's wall, because black has sent it and can easily, easily split the side here. But if we have this pattern, then 14 and 16 are on the fifth line and the sixth line, right? If you count from the top, and that makes a huge difference. Now how does black split the side? The only move is right here, right? You can't play this, right? This is only a one space extension. Normally we say you have to leave yourself with the option of playing 
a two-space extension on both sides. And number 17 is the only choice now, even when the left side is empty to begin with. Right. And in this situation, actually, the correct move for white is to play at number 18 here and forcing black at number 19. Even though black has a two-space extension here on the left side, it's really weak. White is very strong on the upper side. It's mostly alive. It's very hard to attack this white wall with these two stones on the outside. And black only has two stones. And there are all kinds of moves that white can make, right? All kinds of moves like this, or even attack moves like this in the future, depending on the situation elsewhere on the board. So these two stones are relatively weak compared to without the white reinforcement here. Um, this would be very hard for white to contain these two black stones. So this makes a huge difference in terms of how black can split the side and settle on the shape. Furthermore, what AI has in mind, if AI has in mind, is that white's wall is actually pretty weak. And that's something that didn't occur to human players before. We would just assume that this wall is pretty strong and you can't attack it right away, right? Because the wall is supposed to be the strongest shape you can build at the beginning of a game. But AI is saying, actually, no. The best way to play in this situation is not to simply play in the center. It's actually to play right here. Right? This is a little counterintuitive. It's definitely not what we teach beginners because, of course, white will kind of pincer at number 16. And now, if you want to play an extension, it's only a one space extension right on the left side here. But that's not what number 15 means. Number 15 is aiming at a peep right here, aiming a cut. Right? So, obviously, you can't cut right away. It's going to be a net, black will die. But this peep is really, really important for this shape. With number 15 setup, the best move for white is probably to connect. And when you get this peep and connect in exchange, black benefits already. And all of a sudden, white is in a bit of trouble, right? Black can keep building here, and white all of a sudden doesn't have a base, doesn't have, have any ice space. It can extend on this side, but this shape is very flat. And white's wall has no potential anymore after these three stones. And black can just keep building this way. And if white wants to connect underneath, then this is also very, very small on the second line. And once again, the wall is basically gone after 17 and 19, after the peep and the jump. And that's not acceptable for white. So what AI realized was that white is actually not in a good shape. Right? So AI was actually more sensitive to the shapes than human players. Human players just assume that this is a strong shape. Six stones on the outside, you can't cut right away. If you peep here, AI even suggests peeping here directly, um, or, or at least AI can handle it <laughs> as black. But at least in this situation, white can counterattack, like here, without playing the connection. But after the setup, uh, it's really harsh, really, really harsh. And of course, white cannot play here. This will be redundant. It's be doing nothing, right? Number 16 would not be a good use of this wall either. Right, so you have to stay aggressive, putting some pressure on number 15. But after these moves, uh, it's actually very hard to contain black. You can still fight, but the bottom line is, again, the wall is gone, just like that. So this is why this favors black, because black can actually split the left side or even attack the wall. Again, let's just go back and forth. Compare this to the previous pattern. Now, in this situation, if black peeps, it's not as harsh, even if even if white connects here, because of these two stones, white has good ice space, right? Good ice space. And number 17 is harder for number 17 to connect to these stones. Just harder, much harder to attack white with these two stones on the outside. And it's very hard for a setup. You can't set it up this way. It doesn't really make sense, right? In this, with this shape, black is obviously uh, weak because white can connect very easily here. So the best black can do is Again, just split the left side, but this will leave a weak black group. So black cannot effectively attack this white wall compared to this. So I think that answers our question of why this is the modern Joseki that favors black and why this is the old Joseki that favors white. There's one more thing that you need to ask. Why is black crawling here one more time? Normally, when you play an exchange on the second line, in exchange for your opponent's move on the third line, this doesn't favor you. So why does black play another move on the second line here? And normally the answer is life and death, as I've mentioned many times here on my channel. You play on the second line at the beginning of a game in Joseki's 
to ensure that you, you're staying alive, to give you an advantage in life and death. And this is exactly what's happening here. Right? So what's the difference? Well, the difference is that after you play elsewhere, let's say peacefully, uh, what happens is that white still has moves on the corner, uh, big end game moves, but also moves that can influence the left side. One move is simply this descent, standing down here. And what happens now is that black must play an extra move to protect the corner. If not, then white can come in this way. And black has to block, and white will play this honey on the first line. If you block this way, then this will be a fake eye. And black will be dead, right? This is only a straight three, not enough eye space. Of course, you can try to cut or even play this clamping move to get out. Uh, but this will not be pretty. Uh, this will be this will be very tough for black. Maybe white gets the honey, depending on the circumstances. Even if not, this is a terrible shape for black. So this is not acceptable. Right? If you don't block here, it's going to be trouble. But of course, you can say there's this move. We'll turn this into a coat. Right? This will be a coat. But again, why do you want this coat? If white wins, white takes the whole corner, more than twenty points. Right? If black wins, you stay alive. Right? If black wins, it's like this. Still not great because white really has no pressure from this coat. So that's why black shouldn't try to play this coat. And it should just block here instead, 99% of the time, unless something is really urgent so you have to deal with on the left side, given the setup at number 16. But normally, you have to protect the corner. Of course, after this throw in at number 21, uh, you can't really extend because black and the tari here, you have to capture. And now all of these white stones will be dead. Right. So this is the life and death here. So 21 is a good move. Uh, don't ignore it. If you ignore it, you're going to think black is already dead, completely dead. Uh, but no, uh, you have this move. It's a ko, but it's a very good ko for white. So it's not worth it for black to, to play this. So in this situation, 13 and 14 doesn't really matter. It doesn't really help, right? If you play the ko, um, it's a ko here in the corner. It doesn't really matter if you have this exchange. And if it's not a ko, we saw the straight three, right? So again, it's still going to be that shape. So what matters is another situation. So let's take a look at this. For instance, if you have something like this, then white has this honey on the second line. Black will have to block here, and white will have to play this tiger's mouth, right? Now black faces a choice. Oftentimes, this tiger's mouth, or you can see it as a diagonal move from this stone on the third line. If black takes care of the corner, then white can come in. So this is the key difference here. So number 20 is a good setup for moves on the left side. And it's one space further down from this standing down, right? So that's basically it, right? It's one space further down and might be able to do more things than the move standing down. And when black ignores number 20 here in the corner, you play something like this. Say if you need to protect the left side for some reason, then number 13 and 14 will make a difference. So in this case, number 22 is very valuable. And what happens now is that black is already alive after this exchange. You can stand down here, right? This is a very conservative way to play. And this shows you that black is already alive. Or you can just connect here, same thing. But this is not ideal, right? So AI is actually suggesting in this situation, you could crawl one, one more time. White can't really take it. It's too small. And black will get on the third line. So black actually benefits from getting on the third line in exchange for the corner. So white will keep playing here. And AI is suggesting this move. Right, it's really, really smart. The AI is basically saying, I don't really care about the corner. I don't want to play a move on the second line to, just to stay alive. I want to maximize what I can do on the outside. Right. So if you play at number 25, then again, getting on the third line here, making this connection is better for black. If white plays here, number 26 is relatively small. Now black is happy to connect here. And once again, this will be a living shape. And this is all thanks to the setup by numbers 13 and 14. So remember this shape on the corner, we're gonna see it in just a bit without number 13 and 14. So what happens now? Let's say we have the same pattern, but you don't make this exchange in advance. And what happens now is that black is dead. Because now, after white comes into the corner, and number 20, if you wanna crawl again, white is not going to be so polite. White is going to block here by playing this honey. And now there's not enough ice space all of a sudden, right? Black owes a move here. If you lose a move here by playing elsewhere at number 19, then this is a dead shape. You have to cut and try to make use 
uh, of the dead shape to be the wall or something on the outside. So this will be much, much tougher for black. And that's the key difference here. Because now, after white comes into the corner, white can play the honey and kill black. Whereas, to play this now, black is still alive, right? Black doesn't play away and give white a free move on the corner. Black is still alive. And it's inconceivable for white to play this honey and give black a cutting point, right? Exposing itself uh, to this kind of a cut, really harsh cut. So this is not okay for white. So white will have to play this. And that's why this matters, right? So we saw when you get to this situation, being able to take care of the left side after this stone, this tiger's mouth, could be really important for black. And this stone buys you life, basically. And that's it. So to recap, this is the modern Joseki that favors black. And this is the key reason why number eight is disfavored. It's not favored anymore in the age of AI. The old Joseki was this. And you need to know the difference between these two patterns. And you also need to know why black crawls one more time when it doesn't seem necessary now. But it will prove very important for black's life and death sometime down the line. I hope everything made sense to you. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Good luck and thank you for watching.